Morning guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is work under the overhang up here where the forge is at. I do a lot of projects and things up here as well. And one of these days I should probably do a video on all of the tools and things that I use for crafting. Not necessarily things that I carry into the woods, although I do carry some small things for crafting into the woods. But I have a larger crafting kit of things that I've assembled over the years that I use to make a lot of things with. Today what we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of rubber roof sheeting. And this stuff you buy by the roll. It's a really thick, heavy duty, almost inner tube thickness rubber material. What we're going to do with that is I've got a cheapy apron here that I'll show you guys a close up of. would be something that you'd wear like for cooking in front of your barbecue type apron. And I'm going to cut the same pattern out of this rubber sheeting and make a more permanent apron that I can use for skinning flushing and things like that that will last for a long time and going to be more of a bomb proof caliber as I like to call it. It's going to be something that's going to last forever. And the rubber is obviously multifunctional if I wanted to carry it in my pack, but a lot of times in a base camp scenario where you might be doing skinning and flushing on the trap line and things like that, you may want some type of rubber smock like this to keep that grease and stuff off your clothes, especially when you're pushed up against the flushing beam holding down the hide with your belly and pushing the flushing knife. You want to keep that stuff off of your clothing. So you wear an apron for that. And they make a lot of aprons out there that you can buy. And there's a lot of good ones out there. But I think something that's made out of this rubber sheeting will last virtually a lifetime. Especially if you put good heavy duty grommets in it. And we're going to use actual GP medium tent grommets from a tent repair kit that I picked up in trade a while ago. And anything like that that has pieces and parts in it you can make other things with is always a good item in trade value. And it had very, very it had a very good variety of tools in it that can be used for crafting, not just tent repair. And we can go over those in another video, like I said. So let's get started on our project. What we've done is we have just laid our rubber roofing out here and basically laid our pattern or our other apron on top of that. And basically I'm just going to cut that out of this pattern exactly the same. I'm going to give it a little bit more length. I'm going to give it about four more inches of length. You can see where I've got it laid and overlapped right there to the end of the table. I'm going to cut it all the way down to the end of the table to give myself four or five more inches of length. But everything else will stay the same. So we'll cut that out and then we'll put some grommet holes in it. Okay, so basically all we did was we laid this out and cut the pattern right off of it, just like this. Now we just need to put grommet holes in it where we're going to tie it here, 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 and here. I'm going to drop the grommets a little bit further down. This one's tied right here on the side. I'm going to drop the grommets down about an inch from that on the new one. So to cut our grommet holes is pretty simple. Thanks to the fact that we have this tent repair kit, it comes with grommet hole cutters and grommet hole setting tools. And I'll show you that right now. Okay, so this kit came with two different size punches, a nice rawhide mallet, and of course this is a stitcher's palm for pushing sail needles through fabric, another very good bonus of this kit. And then I have bags of grommets with the setting tools in here and it has an anvil and it has the anvil and it has the forming punch for the rivet. And I have two different size grommets. This is the large one. We're not going to use that size. We're going to use the smaller size. And then we have this one. That is a smaller size. And each one of these grommets comes with two pieces. It has two pieces that go on top of each other. And when you smash it down, these points go into that rib right there and hold that grommet secure. So we're going to need one, two, three. We'll need four of those. So we'll grab one more other half here and then we'll have our four. And to cut these holes we're going to use the smaller size punch. So we'll put the bigger one back. And I've got a rubber pad here. Just a piece of rubber channel that I use for flint napping and things like that. And that's what we're going to punch our holes with. So the real simple thing of 
doing this is, or the real simple portion of this, is that we're just going to lift this corner up onto our rubber pad, give ourselves a little bit of overlap for the grommet from the corner, pound it down through there to punch our hole out, and you can see that's cutting that hole. Rubber's a little more difficult to cut than fabric, obviously. It may take us a couple punches here. To get it cut out, there we go. Now that we have our hole punched, we're going to bring our anvil in, set our grommet in the anvil and through the hole, put the top portion on, make sure it's squared up in the anvil, and then we just take our setting punch and drive it home. Just like that, and that gives us a permanent grommet in that piece of rubber. Hit that a couple more times just to make sure it's good and set. And we'll repeat that process on all four of our grommet holes. Pretty simple stuff. Okay guys, so there we go. We got our four rivets in here to make our grommets. One, two, three, four. Or our, I shouldn't say rivets, I should say grommets. We got our grommets in here and as you can see, you know, with the right tools, that is an easy job. I mean, it took five minutes to get that done. It's a very simple project, but I wanted to show it to you because you can buy grommet kits and things like that, and maybe not near as heavy duty as this military stuff, but you can buy these kind of kits, and having pieces and parts to manufacture things on your own is a good thing. Um, this rubber sheeting is not expensive if you buy it. Small pieces of it is expensive if you buy a whole roll, but you can make a lot of things out of it. But there's probably less than $5 in this whole setup right here, and this thing's going to last a lifetime of abuse and use. Okay, so once I've got that done, now all I have to do is put something with an adjustable string here at the top so I can make it smaller or longer depending on who's wearing it or what's comfortable for me. You can see it comes down, I have to back way up, but it comes down to about two inches above my boots, which means it's going to give me total coverage. And then I've got two lines on the outside here that I can wrap around and tie them back, or I could wrap it all the way around the front. If I wanted a good tight fit, I could wrap it all the way around, tie it off up front. That's going to get in the way when I'm possibly over my flushing beam, but it may not. And I would probably replace this paracord with some type of a stout rope if I could, but I'd use what I had, and I had paracord laying out here, so I used that. But this makes a really good, like I said, it's a heavy-duty rubber skinning and flushing apron that is going to be easily cleaned off, wiped off, blood, guts, all that stuff's going to come right off of it. If I wash it off in the creek, it's not going to get stained. So this is going to work out really well. For this trapping season, I want to share this do-it-yourself project with you guys today. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. Appreciate you guys joining me for this quick do-it-yourself video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, affiliates, and sponsors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.